Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Our guest today is from a technology company that has created a cognitive testing platform for use in medical, commercial, and consumer environments. He will deep dive into cognitive health, as well as the company's most recent agreements, collaborations, and timelines investors should know over the near term. He's the COO of Cognitivity Neurosciences. Dr. Thomas Sawyer is joining us today. Hey, Tom, welcome back to The Dive. Hi, Cassandra, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so let's dive right into it. According to the World Health Organization, almost 50 million people are affected by dementia, and the number is actually expected to increase. Do you think that the medical community is doing enough to address this? Yeah, well, look, I think the medical community is, is working extremely hard on this on a, on a daily basis. And I think enormous amounts of money are going into you know, research and university level in, in clinical practice and in, in the discovery of, of drugs for this. So, you know, I, I think that the, there is no lack of effort or investment in this area. Um, but what I would say people are short of, I, th I think, is, is tools to make a practical difference. But in terms of drugs, you know, there are a number of, of, of potentially very effective drugs in the near term pipeline. So I think over the next few years, we'll start to see some interventions that can prove very effective. So you do think that there's a real possibility that there will be effective treatments to stop neurodegeneration in the near term future? Yes, I, I really do, actually. I think I'm, I'm not alone in that. I think that, you know, diseases like Alzheimer's are, are, are very much where cancer was maybe 20, 30 years ago, you know, without really effective treatments. But, you know, as, as, as the world puts their, their, their effort into this, you know, in terms of research, in terms of dollars spent on, on development of, of new, new treatments, things will come through and things will improve. And, and every day we understand more and that's what's really critical. Okay, now let's talk about cognitivity. You announced the agreement with Abu Dhabi Health Services Company and Prime Health for Cognica to be deployed in a pilot program in the UAE. Can you walk us through the agreements and why the UAE? Sure, well, well this is a great one. I mean, Seha, which is the, the Abu Dhabi company, um, are, are rolling us out in, in their across their clinical network. So that's a primary and secondary care. Uh, and it's fantastic because they really understand how important it is to, to be able to detect brain health, health issues when people come into the healthcare system, you know, in the same way that they would regularly be checked for blood pressure. Um, why shouldn't you have your brain health checked? So, so they really get that. And, and what they're concerned about is, again, this early detection idea, the idea that if you pick up on, on diseases early enough, you can, you can intervene effectively. And, and, and they're very progressive on, on that front. So it's a really great partnership, a pilot for us. We're, we're really pleased to be working with them. Okay, so last month, you also announced a commercial agreement to deploy Cognica with Beyond Geriatrics, a specialist primary and urgent care clinic in Florida. What does this agreement mean for both parties? Yeah, well, I mean, for, for us, it's really exciting to working with, with such great providers of, of clinical, um, clinical services, really, for, for geriatric uh, patients. Um, they're very progressive. They, they really care about giving the best possible care to their, their patients. And that is now expanding so that they are able to take advantage of what our Cognica product can do, which is allow fast and effective sensitive measurements of, of, of brain health. So then clinicians can be really aware of what's happening and, and, and react accordingly. So, so it's, it's fantastic for us. I mean, these are the, the kind of pioneers in, 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 in clinical provision that, that we like working with there. And we're also really excited to, to start showing some, some commercial traction in the USA. I mean, this is obviously going to be our biggest market and we're working very hard in there and seeing these early people come on board is very gratifying. Now, the company recently published its latest peer-reviewed research article. What does this article entail, and how can this data be used to improve your platform? Yeah, that was a really interesting paper. And what it was really showing is, is really the effectiveness of our technique, which is where we expose people to these short-duration images, which either contain an animal or they don't. Now, the, this, this animacy, this presence or absence of an animal image is actually really, really important because it taps into a, an innate ability of the human brain and indeed of primate brains as well. So, so monkeys can do this too, where the brain can react quite spectacularly to, to an animal stimulus. Uh, and you can see how, you know, our, in, our, in our ancestral past, how it would be very advantageous to either 
recognize an animal so you could run after it and catch it or indeed to run away from the one that wanted to catch you but it's a particularly um yeah. important thing because the, the brain reacts very very strongly to it but also it's it's culturally consistent so it, it is very important for us that our, our test is be, being able to be used equally well across the, the entire global population and that, that's that's a big big plus for what we do okay so let's talk about your announcement about working with durham university and my sports well-being what led you to start focusing on athletes? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And this is a, a project that's quite close to my own heart. Uh, from when we were first developing this technology, we, we really did believe that there would be a very good application for this in detecting concussion in the first instance. So the idea that, that if, if someone takes a, you know, concussion is basically a mild brain injury. So if, if you incur that, then it would affect your ability to, to process. Now, the way that our, our technology works is that it engages you know, an awful lot of the brain in, in the processing that we're measuring the performance of. So if you've had a head knock or, or are suffering from concussion, we theorize that you should be able to detect it with us. And indeed, that, that very much seems to be the, the case. So at Durham, we're working with, with high level sports um, people and looking into whether, firstly, whether we can detect concussion. But there's also a very interesting piece around performance for athletes in that if your brain is working at its best efficiency, that is what gives you the best performance. I mean, if you're imagining if you're playing tennis, the quicker you can judge the way a ball is coming in, the quicker you can react to it and the better you can deal with that. Well, that's down to cognitive functioning. That's down to quick processing. So, so we believe there's a, a lot that we can do both in, in concussion detection and monitoring and also in, in performance in sports. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So with all these multiple collaborations formed over the last few months, how are you making sure that these opportunities are well funded? Yeah, so 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 look, I mean, from our point of view, we, we we're really really developing the commercial side of our of our company at the moment, as as you can tell. You know, we've really transitioned from being an R and D and development company where we're building IT, where we're proving that that kind of science works in 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 the real world, and now we're really getting into into the rollout of it. So so you know, we we we're focusing very heavily on that and making sure that we have the resources on our side to do that. But what's really important is that we're able to really show the world that our technology is being adopted by people who, who, who understand it, you know, who really get it, and people who have a good reputation in the world. And then they will try it and then they'll convert into a, you know, a larger scale deployment. And in fact, we had an announcement today, which was a great example of that with Prime Health in the Middle East, which is doing um, corporate health and, and, you know, really supporting brain health in, in their customers. And we've done a short pilot with them and now, now we're doing a full commercial deployment. And that's really the trajectory we're on at the moment, which is which is really pleasing actually. And it's, it's, all, it's all coming together very nicely. Now you also announced that the company will be presenting its findings from its UK health economy study at the upcoming Alzheimer's Association International Conference. What can you tell our viewers at this point? Yeah, well, well the AAIC is, is really the, the premier Alzheimer's disease conference, you know, around the world. And it's hosted by the Alzheimer's Association, obviously. And uh, look, I mean, the, the sort of data that we've been collecting in our real world deployments over the last few years, really, is very, very important because we need to be able to show people that, that not only is it a good idea to look after your patients' um, brain health very, very well, but also that it makes economic sense for you to do that. You know, if, if you are able to detect disease earlier, it really has a massive impact on, on not just you know, how well people do, but actually the cost of care of them over, over a long period of time. And indeed, the Alzheimer's Association published a report um, a few years ago, which really showed that very much that, that, that you know, if you detect early, the ongoing costs of care are drastically reduced. And they said that you know, if everyone in the, in the US at the moment who currently has dementia is detected early, over the course of their lifetimes, the healthcare system could save up to nearly $8 trillion. So it's a really, really massive economic impact of doing this. And it's important that we're able to show the world that that's the case. All right, so one more question for you here, Tom. Are there any key timelines or milestones that investors in cognitivity should be watching out for over the near term? Yeah, well, well I, think, I think I really touched on that just a, a second ago, that, that we are you know, really building momentum around our commercial operation and bringing on these, these, the, you know, these early adopters, these key reference clients, which are, which, which really help us to make the case as we go into the markets much more widely. So I think for the next, next six months or so, I think you can expect to see a lot more of that, you know, we're bringing people on board and then they will start to expand our use of the technology. And, and that's really, you know, really what we have to deliver as a company. We really want to go ahead and, and demonstrate that we can make a huge commercial success of this. And, and that's exactly the trajectory we're on. 
Perfect. So can, um, is it, is your app only for healthcare providers or can you use it at home too? Just curious. Yeah. So, so, so currently we are very much focused on the clinical market. You know, that's really where we get to prove the value of this, where we get it to be used in, in the place where it has the, the, the most, the most impact really on, on people's lives. But there's absolutely no reason why, why our technology can't be deployed in, in the home. You know, uh, it, it has been validated as, as being able to be used remotely, so it doesn't require expert supervision. And, and indeed, that's probably the future of where we are. In the same way that you see other medical technologies coming into the home. I mean, routine home monitoring of, of blood pressure and heart rate and so on is, is very much normal now. So, so this is the, yeah, you know, ultimately the way the healthcare will go. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and updating us, Tom. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks a lot, Cassandra. To our viewers at home, thank you so much for watching today. We'll be back again tomorrow and you're not going to want to miss it. So be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe below before you leave us.